what's been said for about being thankful that we have this technology uh, available to us that we can meet uh, remotely and continue to study God's word. And we're in the book of Galatians, the 15th verse of the fifth chapter. And we'll get into that, but uh, let's first have a uh, short word of prayer. You bow with me, please. And Father, we're thankful for the gospel, for the light that it provides us in this old dark world of sin. We pray, Father, that we may ever adhere to its precepts and statutes, that in doing so we may be blessed by uh, the blood of Jesus Christ, through whom we have the hope of salvation. Go with us now as we engage in this study. Bless us every time we do so, and may we be blessed in the hope that awaits us in that home in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> it says in verse 15 here, uh, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. So we kind of uh, read between the lines here and think perhaps maybe there was some strife among the Christians in the Galatian churches. Well, be that as it may, this... Uh, may say something about the temperament of the Galatians, but would be in contradistinction to the ideal stated in the previous verse, uh, which uh, says, for all the laws fulfilled one word in this, you shall love your neighbor, agape, love your neighbor as yourself. So there may be a little uh, uh, discord there, but anyway, uh, the spirit implied here it was one of malice and hostility, not loving your neighbor as your as yourself. And looking at uh, some of the um, lexicons, you know, bite is used metaphorically. That means to thwart, vex, irritate. Or, or to wound the soul, cut, lacerate, uh, rend with uh, reproaches, kind of get the idea there. And yeah, devour means to, as we would think of it, to eat, swallow, or devour. It's uh, metaphorically used to things such as fire, which, you know, if you have a wood log, something like that. The wood, wood is consumed by the uh, fire. So uh, when you're talking about persons, of course, uh, means to consume or to destroy one another. And it's to eat up in, in the sense to tear to pieces. And uh, it's a uh, Metaphorically, again, it's it, when it's used with an accused of the person, it uh, means to, to ruin, to, to inflict injuries on somebody. In verse 16, it says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And if we can look back up here at uh, verse 13, and I'll read that for you. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Not only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So in verse 16 says, I say then walk in spirit and you shall not feel the lust of the flesh. So Paul is telling the Galatians that if they faithfully follow the teachings of the Spirit, and that is the gospel that uh, Paul preached, they will not yield to evil impulses. There is no danger of Christian liberty being abused if one walks by the Spirit. 
The question then, of course, uh, we all have to answer it, which one shall control? In verse 17, it says, for the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Well, there's a uh, struggle for supremacy between the spirit and the flesh, always at war with one another. Where the spirit is allowed to predominate, <clears throat> then the urges of the flesh can be regulated and controlled. When one is not controlled by the spirit, <clears throat> Then the constant appeals of the flesh for gratification render men lukewarm in the service of God. It destroys their love of God and his son. It destroys their love for the Lord's church. It destroys their love of his fellow men, especially those of the household of faith. They may, as a result, be doing exactly what they wish, but in their faithful service to God according to the Spirit, if that is their stated desire, they do not. In verse 18, Paul says, if, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Paul has contrasted the Spirit and law, uh, chapter 3, verse 2. Faith and law, chapter 3, verse 23 and following. Slavery and freedom, chapter 4, verse 22 following, and chapter 5, verse 1. Spirit and law again, in uh, chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. And finally, the flesh and spirit, uh, chapter 5, verse 16 and following, which this verse 18 complements. The new life in the spirit is not mere statutory observance but it is a surrender to the authority and guidance of the Spirit through the word of truth, which is the sword of the Spirit. Life in the Spirit makes man free from the law of, the law of sin and death. <clears throat> in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and the insubordinate, for the ungodly, and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. And in Romans, the sixth chapter, verses 14 and 15, which we'll get to eventually, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. <clears throat> Since Paul stated that if you are led by the Spirit, then you are not in law, that is, the law of sin and death, it would be a misappreh misapprehension to say that we are not under any law. Laws constrain accordingly. Paul now begins a list of works of the flesh that are forbidden or constrained by the law of Christ. In the verse 19, he says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication. Uh, fornication is not in the King James or ASV. It, they use it, uh, or I should say, adultery is not. And that's the Greek word, uh, pornea, which includes both adultery and fornication. So the uh, New King James translators included uh, both ideas. <clears throat> and it says adultery, fornication, and cleanness, lewdness. And lewdness is a lasciviousness in King James in the American Standard. Now, Paul is not necessarily saying that the Galatians are guilty of all of these, but he is saying that. These works are obviously works of the flesh. He says in verse 21, we'll get to that, that he has warned them before. So this is not the first time he's 
warned him about this. Although the Jews were at times guilty of these vices, <clears throat> uh, these were much more common among the pagan Gentiles. There's no doubt that these vices harm society. And we can see that in ours, you know, these things always harm society. But it, it was also an offense against God and exposed any pretense of faithfulness to God. As Paul stated in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, 19, he wants them to consider their bodies as a temple of the Holy Spirit rather than, than just merely flesh. Adultery, fornication, it's uh, two words here in the New King James, one word in the King James and ASV. And it comes to the word pornea, in which we know we get our English word pornography. It includes uh, fornication, uh, prostitution, and chastity. Now, this was uh, very common in the Gentile world. Oh, probably more so than it is today, but it's getting awfully common today. And we see that uh, at least alluded to in Matthew 19, verse 9, and Matthew chapter 5, verse 27, 28, and then First Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. And cleanness, it really has a, a literal meaning of dirt or refuse. So unnatural vices such as uh, self-abuse, bestiality, sodomy, immoral behavior in general. And this was common among the heathen. You know, we, all you have to do is uh, do a study of the Roman Empire and you, you see how really bad it was. And you can refer to Romans first chapter verse 24 and which we'll get to eventually and then second Corinthians the 12th chapter verses 21. <clears throat> Lewdness is well that's uh, lasciviousness, uh, sensuality, debauchery, indecent conduct, wantonness, uh, sexual excesses, something that's uh, could be shocking to public decency if there is such a thing as public decency anymore. The one who thinks no evil and indulges no impure and holy feelings will keep his life clean and pure, righteous, and holy. And as a society, of course, we need to get back to that. In uh, verse 20, it says adultery, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. Well, he has ended his list of uh, sexual vices and he gets on into uh, other kinds of vices. Uh, adultery is the service to worship or open recognition of false gods. Now, you must keep in mind that the heathen world did not consider their gods as, as idols. They consider them as real beings, maybe uh, glorified humans, but they did not consider them to be idols. The sorcery, it uh, originally had to do with drugs. It uh, usually had reference to witchcraft or magic which often involve the use of drugs. So we haven't become far removed from all that. So the nature of uh, sin changes once again, uh, going forward. Hatred, uh, ASV has enmities. There's various kinds of feelings uh, of hatred towards God or man. So any breach of the law of, of love, agape, or phileo, for that matter, is including this uh, word hatred. Contentions, uh, variance is used in the King James Version and strife in the ESV. It has to do with acts of discord or contention, 
and maybe it's caused by hatred. Jealousies, uh, it's emulations in King James Version. Uh, jealousies and envy, uh, that is negative or painful feelings, anxious fear and unfounded suspicions aroused over the uh, good fortune of others, excellencies of others. Let's do it with the uh, rivalries. Outburst of wrath, that's open eruption of anger, resulting perhaps in a curious, sometimes foul language and maybe some menacing gestures, or maybe even the outside fisticuffs, who knows. Selfish, uh, selfish ambitions, that's uh, strife in the King James Version and factions in the ASV. And we'll cover this again in, in uh, Romans, but it's a policy of self-interest. You know, I'm, I'm in it for myself. Everything has to benefit me, self-gratification, self-interest and so forth. Uh, dissensions, that's uh, seditions in the King James Version and the divisions in the ASV. That's a uh, splitting in two. It's uh, an unwarranted destruction of unity. Uh, heresies, it's parties in the ASV. ASV. That's uh, adhering to an unorthodox doctrine by distinct and organized parties. And in verse uh, 21, the list continues, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as, as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Envy, murder, uh, well, murder is also in the King James Version, but it's not in the ASV. And it's not in the, uh, well, at least one Greek text. It's a state of ill will towards someone because of some real or presumed advantage or prosperity experienced by such a, such a person. person. It's uh, you know, when you see somebody that is doing quite well and you're not, you may be envious of their situation rather than be thankful that they're doing so well. Drunkenness is the practice of seeking pleasure and intoxication, whatever causes the intoxication. It may be alcohol, it may be drugs, and so forth. And I must point out that intoxication. Toxicant is something that's poisonous. To intoxicate is to begin that process. And it has to be a beginning of the process or intoxication would never occur. So we always talk about uh, what what does it mean to be drunk? Well, drunkenness begins by taking that first drink or whatever the intoxicant may be, whether it's uh, drugs, illegal drugs, and what have you. Begins with that first one. So uh, to prevent it, you have to avoid it first one. Revel revelries, that's uh, excessive and boisterous festivities with no restraint, without restraint. Uh, that's carousing, acting wantonly, throwing off all restraints to one's inclinations, propensities, and or passions. Now, we may all have these inclinations, propensities, and passions, but we have to control them. We have to restrain them. And of course, uh, if we're guided by the Spirit, we will control them and restrain them. And he goes on saying the like. So uh, probably more things could have been listed. And uh, I think the reason that he says and the like, because you can go ad infinitum. To list all the vices and uh, moral depravities that one can think up. So it's 
used to just uh, Paul just used the all inclusive and the like. <clears throat> Paul told them uh, what he had told them at some time, some past time. We don't know exactly when that was, but he said, uh, those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, practice <clears throat> carries with it the idea of a uh, uh, performing something repeatedly and habitually. It's not just an occasional lapse of, of uh, discretion or what have you. It means it becomes a habit. You can do it all the time. And it doesn't mean that one has to do all of these things to not inherit the kingdom of God, but it's to practice any one of them uh, repeatedly and habitually. <clears throat> but he says the fruit of the Spirit, and he's doing this in opposition to the uh, works of the flesh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Now you might notice that the fruit of the Spirit is singular as opposed to the plural works of the flesh. And perhaps it's because all these virtues, all the things that are listed, are to be taken together as a unit. A person may have one of these virtues, but uh, having the Spirit will produce them all in the person ruled by the Spirit. So even those who engage in the works of the flesh can have one of these attributes that's the, that someone that has the fruit of the Spirit has. But that doesn't constitute the all-inclusive fruit of the Spirit. So the Spirit uh, will produce them all in the person ruled by the Spirit. Uh, such a one will subdue and hold and restrain all the evil passions and lusts that dwell in the flesh. Now, these graces that are enumerated here em emanate from God and not man. Therefore, it may be said that it is a singular fruit. Well, let's go through them uh, uh, for the time we have left. Love, now this particular love here is the agape love. It says first uh, love of God and then love of man as God's creation. It is the uh, fundamental expression of that spiritual bond between God and man and between man and man in Christ. Joy is that uh, spiritual gladness or, or delight because of one's relationship to God. Christian joy is inseparable from agape love and is not dependent on outward circumstances. Joy and grace come from the same Greek root, charis. Jesus, uh, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, Hebrews uh, 12, verse 2. And that certainly wasn't a pleasant thing. And in 1 Thessalonians, the uh, uh, first chapter, verse 6, and you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. The joy is not always a, a pleasurable thing. Uh, so we shouldn't think of it that way, even though, in, you know, certain pleasurable things may be joyful. In verse 23, he, uh, Paul writes uh, gentleness, and that's uh, meekness in King James Version and ASV. Self-control, it's uh, temperance in the King James Version. Against such, there is no law. In uh, the uh, gentleness in the King James Version, ASV, the word is translated meekness, and I think I've I think uh, I like that better. I think it's a better translation. But in present day English use, uh, neither word 
accurately conveys the meanings, the meaning to the Galatians. Meekness is not readily expressed in English since the term meekness in present day English uh, usage suggests weakness and it is certainly not. Rather, it is a condition of mind and heart, but not in a man's outward behavior only, nor in its relationship relations to his fellow man or his mere natural disposition. It is a balance born in strength of character. It is an inwrought uh, grace of the soul and expressions of it are primarily towards God and uh, when I look at uh, James uh, 1, first, uh, first chapter, verse 21, third chapter, verse 13, and first Peter chapter 3, verse 15, and in the Septuagint, the Psalms 45th chapter, verse 4. It is that attitude of spirit that we accept God's dealings with us as good and do not dispute or resist. It is a firm and unyielding devotion to right as the Bible defines right. According to Aristotle, it is the middle, middle standing between two extremes. Getting angry without reason or not getting angry at all. Those, those are the two extremes. Therefore, it is getting angry at the right time in the right measure and for the right reason. Self-control, that's the uh, control of the whole range of passions and desires for the guarding against uh, personal excesses, the, the result of which will promote the highest activity of all the faculties of body, mind, and heart to the glory of God. There is no law, secular or spiritual, that precludes one from possessing and exercising these graces. In fact, these graces stem from the fulfillment of the law in one word, love, as set forth in verse 14. And those, in verse 24, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Those who belong to Christ do not belong to Moses. In Romans the sixth chapter, verse six, it says, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin may, may be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. And of course, in Galatians, the second chapter, verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The flesh is not in and of itself evil, nor are passions and desires. Now, these are still with us, but must be and are expected to be controlled. However, if the restraint of faith is removed or loosened, then these conditions may cause one to falter in his walk with God. Our obedience is the only objective measure of our faith in God. If we live in the Spirit, verse 25, let us also work, uh, walk in the Spirit. In chapter 5, verse 16, walk is from a different Greek word than is used here. Here it is stokeo, from a derivative of seiko, that is to range in a regular line, like in a march, a military march, or a rank to, you know, to kind of keep step. So figuratively, it's to conform to virtue and piety to be in rows, plants as well as men are marching in file to battle, to walk by rule. In Acts uh, 21st chapter verse 24, it says to walk heartily and keep the law, same idea. Philippians 3rd uh, chapter verse 16, let us walk by the same rule. 
same idea, and also Galatians 6.16, walk according to this rule. Those who profess to be living by the Spirit, as the Spirit directs, will, as an obedient soldier of the cross, walk in harmony with military discipline. He exhorts them to keep step with one another as one as each keeps step with Jesus Christ, the commander of them all. In verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 16, it is from the Greek word peripateo, auto. You can go look it up yourself. That's to tread all around. That is to walk at large, uh, especially as a proof of ability. Figuratively, is to live, deport oneself, follow as a companion or votary. This votary is someone you idolize. The word by itself may imply good conduct or bad. In Ephesians, the fifth, uh, second chapter, verses one and two, is and you made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to Prince of Fire and so forth and so on in the first chapter 5 or 16 of Galatians it says there's the idea of conformity of one's will to that of the spirit one's Christian conduct following verses use the same Greek word as used in Galatians uh, chapter 5 verse 16 and demonstrate the good aspect of walking in the spirit in 2 Corinthians 5th chapter verse 7 it says walk by faith not by sight 1 John 1 verse 7 it says but if we walk the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another in the blood of Christ as his son cleanses from all sin in 1 John 2 verse 6 he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked so I think we'll start next time with Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 26, since we time has elapsed. So I appreciate your kind attention, and I hope these uh, words have been uh, uh, beneficial to you.